Hey everyone, Fusemark coming at ya. On this concept of play to earn games and integrating Unity with the blockchain, as I've talked with many of you in the community, especially on Discord, architecturally, it's a very different from your traditional games, whether that's VR, whether that is 2D games, uh, you name it. And in that, because you are interacting with a blockchain and you are, in the most basic sense with a play to earn game, actually going in and giving out tokens based on a player's actions, you need to be very careful about how you design that game and application. In the case that, let's say someone chooses to hack or cheat in the game, uh, which is very, very common in popular games, and you start to see a lot of anti-cheating software that's put out there, say with Fortnite, for example, you need to architect your game in such a way that when you're dishing out tokens for, for players' actions, there's no way to cheat that system. And I, I, I think a lot of people get into the impression that when, when you are thinking about these games, I can just kind of build it in that traditional sense of most of the game lives in Unity, except maybe some multiplayer that you, you put in the cloud, but that actually can't really be the way that you architect your game. So I wanted to quickly address that topic in this video. If you do have further questions about the architecture, I might put out some future videos on other key areas that as I've thought about this conceptually made sense on how you might wanna consider architecting your application based on kind of the needs of what, what your game is ultimately trying to deliver. I think it makes sense to start with really the concept of Axie Infinity, uh, which is basically the first play to, play to earn game that I tried out. It's not that I play it regularly. I think generally speaking, the whole play to earn movement is pretty early on. And a lot of the games that are out there are not as interesting as I would like, but that that's fine. I think when, when we're, we're looking at a space that's pretty early, but very high level, right? And Axie, uh, let's break it down. So you, you can purchase NFTs, which are your actual characters that you bring into your game. That's one layer of it. I think that deserves a separate video to really dive into that architecture of how, how that all integrates together with say a marketplace. The more interesting part is around their, their tokenomics, if you will. So you have two tokens that are part of the Axie quote unquote metaverse, if you will, um, which are your SLP tokens and AXS tokens. So the AXS tokens kind of act as um, kind of a pseudo hybrid governance token, but also can be used from for some token economics. Let's push that one to the side. The, the SLP token or smooth love potion token, which is a really cheesy name, is um, the token you earn for playing the game. There's a kind of a, a briefing period where you're not allowed to touch it. And I think it's delivered as like MSLP or something like that. And then that SLP eventually transitions from being kind of a non-consumable token to an actual SLP token that you could take off the blockchain, sell it, do whatever you want. So that that's very high level what you can you can do in Axie Infinity. And the, the key part being that you have to play the game, at least as far as I'm aware, I haven't done some crazy hacking or any of that nature, but the intent is you have to play the game in order to earn the SLP. So how do you enforce that? So from, from a game talking to a blockchain, let's, let's keep it kind of simple here, right? To start with, let's say there were only two components, a game and a blockchain. If I, if I had a game and I'm simulating the game and the AI uh, on, on my game app, then what a couple things need to happen so the game gets simulated i either win or i lose if i lose nothing happens if i win and i earn slp then i need to communicate to a blockchain to say hey i've earned slp this is the api that i would like to call with the metadata that says here's how much slp you need to reward me what's the problem with that okay if i'm monitoring the network traffic I can see that API call going from my Unity game to the blockchain. What does that mean? If I'm a smart hacker, it means that, okay, why don't I just copy this network data and send it myself, 
right? It doesn't matter that there's no way for the blockchain to know that it came from the Unity game versus me just calling it randomly, right? That's a problem because what that means is I don't actually have to play the game to easily hack the system and go in and actually mint myself SLP. And it becomes even more of a problem because it's not tied to an account anymore, or I can very easily say, okay, let's create a bot that is generating thousands of accounts and just spamming the blockchain with um, these, these API calls and printing out SLP. From a tokenomic standpoint, that completely ruins the actual value of SLP and the whole play to earn concept as a whole kind of breaks down. So from a security standpoint and a hackability standpoint, you can't, we can't take that model. What does that mean? That fundamentally means, well, if, if we were only looking at two components, you could theoretically try to simulate the game on the blockchain. The only problem with that is those blockchain transactions are very costly. And if you're, if you're dealing with, with anything that's kind of a practical game, it's not gonna fly. So you need something that's a little bit more authoritative um, and anyway, in this concept, because I'm I'm the one as the game developer giving tokens away, it naturally makes sense for me to own the tokens and have a me basically grant you tokens on an action. To automate that, you need a server. So a server kind of can act as that broker that represents you, the game developer. As the game developer, you're going to go ahead and say, hey, I see that you're playing my game. Once I've verified that you have actually played the game, then I'm gonna give you those tokens. I'll, I'll talk to the blockchain on your behalf and I'll give you tokens. So how do I verify the game? The, since I'm, I'm kind of a broker in this scenario, that means that basically the game is constantly talking between client and server here. And me as the verifier, I basically take your input, simulate the game, and give you back the game state. So I'm basically saying, let's take Axie Infinity, right? I got a bunch of cards, uh, a set of actions, a board state, and, and, and an AI associated with that. So I'm gonna simulate the game for you, which basically means I know the game state, I know the cards, I'm going to take your input, move all of the pieces according to that input, and give you the output back to the game. Now the, the game will, can take that output and then simulate all of the animations and, and state transition, if you will, to basically convert me playing a card and, and moving all of the pieces accordingly. And as a server, I've just verified that you've made an input. So now I can take this chain of inputs, verify everything, and assuming it all checks out, I now can assume that you played the game correctly. And if you played the game correctly and you won, great, here's your SLP. So by having that server as a third piece here that sits between client with Unity game, server that represents me as game developer that does the verification and rewarding, and blockchain, now you have a system that is secured from the client not talking directly to the blockchain and printing out SLP left and right. And in my contract, I can basically say, hey, look, because I have this verifier server right here, that's the only one who can grant out SLP. But once you have SLP, you can transfer and do everything that you want. So the, the blockchain can really act as that separation layer for, for the tokenomics, um, granting players the ability to take control of their assets, do whatever they want with them, whether that is spend it to uh, enhance their NFTs, whether that is sell it, doesn't really matter, right? It's That's not my job as the game developer. I'm giving that choice to the player on how they choose to play the game with the tokens and, and the earning mechanics. And I think that's what's so fascinating about how you can build out these applications in in ways that incentivize players uh, to, to play the game, right? And and have fun and and monetize and incentivize different behaviors. Uh, I'm not gonna pretend that I know all of the different ways that you could design uh, incentive mechanics 
based on this architecture, but I think it opens the doors to a lot of different possibilities and that's where things get really exciting. So I talk about this a lot with various different people um, that I have been asking me about play to earn. So I wanted to encapsulate that here uh, in this video. If you did find it helpful, definitely let me know down in the comments below and make sure to leave a like because it really does help out this channel a ton. Uh, and I'd just be curious to hear based on what I've described, um, does this make sense? Uh, is this how you've been thinking about building play to earn games? Uh, hopefully it helps you think about how ways that you can build things out securely because I think that's that's critical uh, if we want mass user adoption in this space. Uh, I'll leave that here for now. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. This has been Fuse Man and I'm signing out.